A new tropical cyclone is forming near Western Australia. Well, it's looking quite clear that this is a new tropical cyclone and ASCAP Pass found that it had nearly completed its circulation earlier on and satellite imagery would suggest that that has now occurred. A tropical depression at 12.8 south, 119.4 degrees east. It is short of tropical storm status at the moment with 35 mile per hour winds, 55 kilometers per hour sustained with a pressure of 1,004 millibars, moving southwest at 6 miles per hour or 10 k's. At 9 p.m. Australian Western Time, that was the situation with this system slowly crawling over the Indian Ocean, eventually towards Western Australia. Here's its current position displayed on the map, and we would show you its wind field, but there is no tropical storm force wind field, of course, uh, but that is expected to change fairly soon. This is a system that could strengthen quite quickly, uh, but uh, still some uncertainty as to how much and how long for. It is 320 kilometers west of Scott Reef, 524 from Rowley Shoals, 638 from Broome, 838 from Port Hedland, and 921 from Carrather. There are no watches or warnings in effect, and the Bureau of Meteorology are watching this system, although they've still not declared it a cyclone yet, but they have risen their chances today. Obviously it's moving away from some of the Indonesi Indonesian islands as well, Sumba it was very close to just a couple of days ago. And that's pretty much where it originated. So chances of a full cyclonic impact in Western Australia are actually low uh, according to the forecast but rough seas and rip currents are likely to occur all along the coast from the central Kimberley down to Exmouth over the next few days. Indeed storm force conditions are also possible especially further west along the coast as this storm progresses and the uncertainty factor increases. Let's take a look at the Force 13 forecast then, and this is what we've got in store. So the wind field growing very quickly as the storm strengthens, and it does strengthen quite a bit, and then it spirals towards the southwest, and then turns quite decisively towards the west, and you see there that Tropical Storm Force winds will have a hard, hard time getting anywhere close to the coast of Australia, according to that forecast, before it dissipates around about day 5 to 7, uh, somewhere along the line in the middle of next week. 35 miles per hour right now with decent confidence, ASCAP from before maybe got just a slight nudge higher but Bomber going with 35 miles per hour as well and that of course as mentioned is 55 kilometers per hour, there's no other real methods of uh, estimating the system right now, there's just the satellite uh, which is uh, still rather poor really as far as storms go uh, but we don't really have any other observations. Well here is the Bureau of Meteorology's cone and they're expecting that it will become a named storm uh, probably during the afternoon of Saturday and then it strengthens, they're saying a category 2 peak, um, I think it could be quite a bit more than that, at least a category 3 peak on the Australian scale I think would be a, fe a decent forecast. And as you can see a rather small system there depicted on the GFS forecast models and it does strengthen very quickly and that's what it's been saying for quite a while before it runs out of steam almost as quickly and only gets to category 2 on the Sapphire Simpson scale as it does so but there it is again strengthening very quickly during the 6th into the early 7th and then starting to weaken and maybe a second little phase where it gets close to hurricane equivalent status as it moves uh, off the coast of the far western Australian region. This is the uh, precipitation uh, forecast and you can see there the simulated radar reflectivity showing a very gnarly core inside that storm uh, near its peak intensity and I certainly think it could get pretty strong although it won't last very long before it really starts to weaken as it moves southwest but I assume it's due to wind shear. Watch again moving southwards at first and then turning quite um, quickly towards the west and suddenly there and its northern side really gets uh, um, messed up there and the southern side starts to wane as well later on and uh, some of the southerly side of the system extends into a big frontal system across Western Australia. Look at the precipitation expectations then in the next seven days and regardless of what happens it looks like it's going to be not much of a rainmaker along the coast. 
most of the rainfall occurring well out at sea there although close to the center near peak we could see up to maybe 22 inches of rainfall that would be 550 millimeters but along the coast of australia we're looking really at maximums only around one inch 25 to 30 millimeters and up towards indonesia they're getting a little bit more on some of those islands as well and timor getting up towards five inches that's uh, uh, 125 millimeters here's where the, sit, sit, uh, the system is situated over very warm sea surface temperatures pushing close to 30 degrees celsius those sea surface temperatures will cool a little bit as it moves towards the more western part of western australia but still at around 28 degrees for the whole duration of this storm's life this is the latest satellite imagery, first of all from Ram Slider, and it shows uh, the system really starting to develop in cloud coverage. The center of this system is on the left hand side there in that big burst that's blown up uh, in the last hour or two, uh, but it is uh, a little bit discombobulated, let's say. Uh, but the eastern side, very much the more prominent side with a very large area of cloud tops, and it is going to be the eastern and south eastern side that's going to have the uh, strongest and uh, largest wind area over the next couple of days as it gets towards its peak intensity then it will consolidate probably discharge some of that banding and then it will become quite a tight system near its peak intensity and then it will start to weaken now there's some more imagery showing in very high cloud tops getting up and above uh, minus well into the minus 80s even minus 90 in one or two spots Radar is not that forthcoming, of course, it's over open ocean, uh, but you can see a few of the bands off the right hand side there uh, from Indonesian and Australian radars uh, showing what the uh, situation is there, a little bit of rain in some areas. You can find all of these products on the Force 13 website, force13.com slash satellite. There's a microwave image there as well showing that circulation is actually pretty good.